greetings and various assorted salutations. Um, this is a short little lecture introducing the ancient Greeks. Uh, this lecture was designed in spring 2020. Uh, the slides were developed originally for the fall 2020, fall 2019 class of ancient civilizations. Anyways, let's begin. All right, now you see a picture of the Acropolis, Acropolis in Athens as it looks today. Um, while it is heavily damaged and over time and, and through, well, lots of use and abuse, uh, Greek history and, leg and the Greek legacy continues to this day. Um, so first, we've got to talk about modern day references. Obviously, if you're a Disney fan, this is going to be one of the things you might think of, Hercules. Um, but there are tons of examples. 300 is another famous example. Granted, it's based off of a comic book that dra dramatizes the events that actually occurred. Um, it just shows you how popular um, Greek culture is, that it's been interpreted by pop culture and then reinterpreted by pop culture. There's also God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Kid Icarus, um, almost all literature classes at some point, either if you don't read the Odyssey, they refer to the Odyssey um, continuously, not that Odyssey. There's the God of War, um, there's a few more examples. The Olympics is based off of Greek tradition, um, but there are many examples. Greek culture pervades very heavily through modern day society. Um, in fact, this is one of the reasons why a lot of students find some familiarity uh, starting now is because they don't realize it, but many of them are much more familiar with Greece than they might imagine. Right. Let's go into the basics. Who are the Greeks? Um, the Greeks, um, we call them the Greeks, but more often the people of ancient Greece would have identified with their local city-state and what is now considered the modern state of Greece. Um, often divided by seas and or mountains, the Greeks um, more and less were focused on their local world. Um, really, Greek identity doesn't emerge until you have people who are non-Greeks dealing with them, or the Macedonians who kind of um, briefly bring them under their rule. But Greek is a very more modern term. Uh, and as a result, because if you ask most Greeks, what are you in the ancient times, they'd say, I'm an Athenian, I'm a Spartan, I'm a Thebian, etc. And so Greeks is kind of a catch-all term for a cult specific cultural group um, that happens to live on the peninsula that we now know as Greece. Um, one of the challenges you're going to run into if you study this time period is this: the ancient Greeks have been studied for a very long time. So this is not a picture from ancient Greece. This is a picture um, of, of Greeks made anywhere between the 1700s and the 1900s. Um, and so there's a lot of artistic depictions of what people think the Greeks looked like. Um, and that has been done through the ages. This is a work from the ancient Greeks. This is one of their samples of pottery. This is how many Greeks depicted themselves. Here's another piece of pottery. Now, I've kind of alluded to this, but where we're talking about is in the various islands as well as the peninsula of Greece. Um, so this is the area that we are looking at. Um, the most famous locales would have been Athens, uh, Sparta, in this in this time period. However, major city states also included Thebes. Um, Delphi was an important religious site. Um, I believe this place you can visit in Berlin because they took a lot of it and put it in a museum in Berlin. Um, and then Crete is additionally part of this world, the Greek world. Now, to complicate things a bit further, the Greeks were a seafaring civilization noted for their trading, and as a result, they have many colonies as far away as in, even located in France and Spain and whatnot. And so the Greeks really traveled around and spread their culture um, well beyond 
the peninsula itself. Here's a geographic map to just show you it's heavily mountain ranged here. And then you get down into the coastal areas. This is a map of their colonial holdings. As you can see, they've got holdings in North Africa, even a little bit into Egypt, Cyprus, and even up into the Black Sea as well. Uh, they established many extensive trade networks as a result and were in contact with many different groups across their history, especially in the later period. Now when? Uh, the ancient Greeks predominantly it were around, we start seeing them in the peninsula in the Neolithic period. Um, and then we have several different sets of Greeks. Uh, we have the Minoans that were on Crete, um, and that's when they existed. And due to a um, volcanic eruption and a tsunami, that's the running theory, the Cretan civilization destabilized and fell apart. That didn't mean there were no longer any, but anyone living on Crete. It just meant that the, the kingdom of the Minoans had collapsed. Um, the Mycenaeans are the next famous group that we see. They're more concentrated on the Greek islands and on the Greek mainland. Um, we don't actually know a whole lot about this group. Um, Homer, the famous poet, sets the Iliad, the Trojan War, in this time period, in the Mycenaeans. So we don't really know... The Greeks that we think of in pop culture are not these Greeks, but in Homer's by Homer's time when his stuff was being when he his the Iliad was being produced, um, they were starting to superimpose what they thought the Greeks back then were like. But the Mycenaeans were a very different bunch, and this is when they were around. We just don't have as much archaeological or evidence as more archaeological and um, storytelling, which makes it very tricky to follow sometimes. The Archaic period is when we start to see the city-states that we think of, like Athens, Sparta, Thebes. The city-states start really taking off in this time period. And then we have the Classical period. This is the Greece that we all think of for the most part. Athens, Sparta, the republics, the kingdoms, um, the wars, the big stuff happens in this time period. Now that's not to say the Greeks go away after this period. Um, but essentially how Greece is fundamentally changes after the invasion of um, Alexander the Great and his father. Um, they, ch they take Greek culture and change it. But the classical period is the Greece we imagine, if you want to think of it that way. Now how? The Greeks are often the example of city-states. They're highly organized city-states. And essentially, most of the city-states, due to the layout of how Greece is designed, they have a port city, and that's their port. Um, often that port is connected by, a, if possible, connected by a wall. And then they have the city that's inland a bit, easier to defend, and then the farmland around it. Um, now, as some of the city-states grew more powerful, they would establish colonies that answered to the city-state. Um, however, city-state identity was very important. Most city-states, um, if you weren't born in the city-state, you could never truly become a member of the city-state. Greeks were very, um, considered their sense of identity very important. To give you an idea how important, uh, Socrates, the philosopher, when he was going to, he had a two choices. He could either drink the hemlock and commit suicide, or he could be banished and never return to Athens again. And symbolically and dramatically, he chose suicide and death, um, as opposed to never being able to return to his homeland. Moving on to notable accomplishments, the main thing that many people think of with the ancient Greeks is architecture and art. You can find evidence of it all over the place. Um, many U.S. buildings mimic that style. Um, as you can see, this is an original work. Here's another one of... Uh, Greek architecture. It's very, very recognizable, and it's you can find it on almost every continent as a result. But you can kind of see the Greeks' columns styles are right here. The Romans copy the Greeks heavily for their styles. Uh, the Egyptians are kind of the outlier. 
But the idea, especially behind these temples that we are seeing, is there's kind of an inner building and then there's kind of a shaded outer portion. There's more fancy technical terms for these things, but I just want to give you an idea of what we're looking at for architecture. And you start to realize that some of this actually isn't Greek architecture. It's really, really impressive, um, inspired by stuff. So like here's some examples of ins architecture inspired by the Greeks. We've got the Capitol. This is a Roman building. Um, the front part is very Greek. The back part is a dome, which is very Romanesque. Um, this is the Capitol building in Austria. They governments really like this architecture. Another example. And of course the Roman Colosseum. While it is a Roman building, it takes a lot of Greek grand architecture styles in it. But, and of course, you know, there. Yeah. The other thing the Greeks are noted for is they're often considered what you would say the foundation of Western civilization. And so many, um, many histor historical, cultural, academic, philosophical ideas scientific, they'll draw back to the ancient Greeks. Um, in fact, one philosopher in the, of the modern era once joked that um, Western civilization is just um, a reading of Plato. In, this, in a way, I'm, mis I'm misremembering it. But essentially, a lot of things are built off the Greeks. Um, it's, it's often consciously done. Uh, we also have the philosophies of Plato and Aristotle, amongst others, um, as, as an example of the Greek impact. This philosophy in the West draws its foundation from the ancient Greeks. Yes, there were philosophers before. Yes, there were philosophers in other parts of the world. But many Western philosophers of so Britain, France, uh, um, let's see, Spain, the Nordic countries as well, they draw an academic tradition from the classic Greeks. Now, due to special circumstances, you are not able to look in the back of the classroom. In the back of my classroom, I have hanging, this is a Renaissance painting of all the Greek philosophers collected. It's um, Raphael's School of Athens. Um, but, no. Greek, Greek philosophy is really partially what got me really interested in history in some aspects. But anyways, that concludes this lecture on the ancient Greeks. We see their pop culture, their lasting legacy, and the very basics of their civilization. Uh, as we're going into the unit, we will be looking at more art and architecture, as well as battle tactics um, and other aspects of Greek culture. This is one of those kind of fun units where a lot of the stuff is like, oh, I've seen that before. And now we're going to go into, well, why is this a thing? Uh, where is the foundation of that vague reference you've seen? So uh, with all that being said, until later.